Ciao, benvenuti tutti. How are you, loves? Welcome. It's Friday. It's freaky and fast Friday. That's what today is. Because today is three ingredient peanut butter cookies. Fabuloso. Now, I've already made some. I already made some and I did them keto. I did three ingredient keto cookies. Now what this is, is a cup of peanut butter. Actually, I couldn't say it's actually keto because this peanut butter actually has some sugar, so I didn't use the unsweetened. But I did use Swerve. Does everyone know what Swerve is? It's a sugar replacement. Hi, Annie Lynn. So I used Swerve and a brown sugar Swerve. It's this right here. Brown sugar Swerve. I had this in my pantry. Hi, Cheryl. And it's erythritol, it's a sugar alcohol. Um, so I made them up just to try it because I know a lot of people were asking about keto with the peanut butter and egg. If you use unsweetened peanut butter and egg and then you use a sugar replacement. I like stevia, but I don't really like it in baking. I haven't tried it with this recipe. I find it has a strange aftertaste. And now after making these, <laughs> I find it has the same. But if people are on keto or low carb, they probably won't mind this. I just find it has, uh, they're lovely, as you see. They bake up really well, they're fabulous. I just find, and my mom, mama found, that there's a little bit of an aftertaste, as all fake sugars have. Um, I don't like to use Splenda. I'd rather use uh, Stevia or something a little more natural. Allie uses maple syrup, uh, but of course then they're not keto. They're gluten-free and they're vegan. But, uh, so try that out, lovey. So there's a lot of different things. Hi, Annie Lynn. But it's such a fast recipe today. It's just amazing how fast it is. We use a cup of peanut butter. Boom, boom, boom. Cup of peanut butter. Now, I learned something by doing research. If you don't like to measure out your peanut butter like this to try to get it all out, what I've heard, what I saw on Facebook, sorry, or on something, I need a liquid measurement. What you can do if you don't like putting the peanut butter like this in, you can take a liquid measure. Let's say you need a cup of peanut butter. What you do is you put a cup of water in a liquid measure. A cup of water in a liquid measure. Um, like a liquid measure. You put a cup of water. I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do if people like this. This was interesting. So you put a cup of water in. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna show it. It's about a little bit less. This is about a cup of water. So let's say you need a cup of peanut butter and you don't wanna get it out, put it back in and then get it out because it's very sticky. What you can do cup of water to a cup of peanut butter. Then you put the cup of peanut butter in, and if it reaches two cups, two cups, keep going until it reaches two cups. Then you have one cup of peanut butter without having to put it in this. And then you drain the water, and then you have a cup. I know, wasn't that the interesting story today? Why isn't everyone just amazed? So if you don't wanna do the sticky, messy part, Hi, Christina. Hi, Deborah Miller. How are you, loves? But if you do, I spray mine with coconut oil so it, it comes out a little bit better. So I have a cup of peanut butter, loves. This is my Aldi peanut butter. It's just their regular peanut butter. It's not unsweetened, uh, not the all-natural. This is kind of like a Skippy or a Jif replacement. That's what it is. So I have a cup of peanut butter, loveys. Very simple recipe. And I have one egg, one egg going right in, loves. So these are gluten-free, sweethearts, for my Aunt Lynn, who's gluten-free. Thanks, Mama. And then it calls for a cup of sugar. I know when I made these last week with my sister, I didn't use an entire cup. I thought that was a little too sweet. So I'm gonna have maybe a half, I have a half cup here and maybe three fourths of a cup of sugar. That's what I'm gonna do, lovies. Because I found the cup was a little too sweet because this is real sugar. And then what I also like to do, they're peanut butter cookies, I put a pinch of salt in because I like it, even though the peanut butter is already salted. And now we just mix it up. Three ingredients. I find they're very tasty because they don't have flour in them. So they're a very intense peanut butter taste. Very intense. So, but if you want to use the cup of sugar, go for it, lovies. It, this is a very wet dough. <laughs> wet dough. So what you'll see is I'm going to use a, a scoop. I like to use an ice cream scoop to get them out. This is actually wetter than last time because actually the sugar makes it less wet. But... That's it, guys. You can put vanilla extract in if you want. You could put oatmeal in. I've seen people add oats. Hi, Tamara. How are you, sweetheart? So I've seen people add oats. I, I, last time I added chocolate chips. You could probably add almond flour. Uh, you can add um, almond butter. You can use cashew butter, pecan butter, uh, all sorts of butters, macadamia butter. But you know that it just may change the temps and the cooking time a little bit because this is uh, for a cup of peanut butter a cup of sugar, and one egg. That's it, the three ingredient peanut butter cookies. So I have my 
oven at 350. I've been preheating it, sweethearts. And you know how you make that crisscross hat shape for the peanut butter cookies? I know there's a story behind that, but I've forgotten it. And I, I did look it up that. once and I've forgotten it. <laughs> I forgot it, but, um, so let me get a fork, sweethearts. Getting my fork, because you want the fork, and you dip it in flour. I'm going to dip mine in almond flour just to keep it gluten-free. So that'll keep it gluten-free for Annie Lynn. That's what we're going to do. And I also like to spray my, um, spray this, the fabulous ice cream scoop, with a little bit of coconut oil spray. So then I just scoop this, guys. You could, you could refrigerate it for about 10 minutes, which I would probably advise to do because it'll set up a little bit better. Since I wanted to show you today, lovies, I'm not going to do that. But I, th this calls baking for about 10 minutes. But what I found last week when I made them with my sister, and they do spread out a little bit uh, because there's egg in it. I found that they took maybe about 10 to 12, 12, 13 minutes, I'd say. So we're going to put these out here like this, lovies. I love using the ice cream scoop, a la, who does this? Barefoot Contessa, Ina Garden, she's fabulous, we love her. So she uses an ice cream scoop. I just think it's easier, especially with a dough that's very wet, so you don't have to get it with your hands. And here we are, mom's looking up the hatch, crisscross hatch. Would you like to read that to them? Peanut butter cookies don't spread as they cook, so you have to flatten them beforehand, that's true. This ensures the middle will cook through. As for the pattern created, it actually creates slightly more surface area, so you'll get more browning in that area. Think of it like a meringue or the top of a shepherd's pie. If it's too smooth, you won't get bits of the browned, crispy bits that you'd get if you rough up the surface. Rough up the surface. You like this, guys? That's it, sweethearts. Hi, Rosemary Royer. How are you, love? Can you dip the fork in sugar for the for the hat? Sure, you could dip it in yeah, sugar, sure. Annie Lynn. You could probably dip it in salt. Allie would dip it in salt, my sister, because she likes her cookies salty. But you can dip it in sugar, it would be very pretty on top. Yes, That'd be shiny. lovely. Yes. But I thought I had some almond flour. And see, this is just very easy. I'm just gonna do, nice. I'm gonna do um, beautiful. 12 cookies, loves. And it makes about maybe 15, I would say. But see, what I do is I dip this, I dip my fork right here in the almond flour. Hi, cousin, how are you, Justin? How are you, oh, sweethearts? Gosh. Everybody's online today. Here we go, so I just have the almond flour. It's a little bit trickier with almond flour. See, we're gonna make the, it, it does stick a little and then you'll have the almond flour on top, but it's pretty actually. So you'll have a little bit of almond flour, but that's all right because that's gluten-free and that's keto. Love the, the hatch info. I never knew why we did the hatch, LOL. I thought it was a decorative. Well, I think it could be decorative too, Miss Tamara. Yeah. Of course, you know, sort of to, to differentiate between other types of cookies, like sugar cookies, those type of things. Um, because I think sugar, sometimes sugar cookies, People will do a little hatch or yes, something yes, on them. I've seen yes, as well. Yeah. So just do a little bit of almond flour so they don't stick. It works really, really well, love. So just go like that. Boom, boom, boom. Last time I used real flour, but we're keeping these gluten-free. Now, they're not completely keto, as you know, because we had sugar in them. <laughs> but there it is, lovies. What my sister did, she actually put chocolate chips on top. When I did it, I put chocolate chips in them. But my nana used to use this, the bottom of a glass. So you could also, I'm going to show you one with the bottom of a glass. You dip it in. This is a big one, but you could do this for sugar cookies. Dip it in flour and then use the bottom of a pretty glass. Great way to do that for sugar cookies as well. So I could show you one of those. But look, guys, here they are. Boom. And see how perfect, all the same size when you use that fabulous. Hi, Dr. Lars. Hi, Dub Hi, Dubra Dubraka. Oh, that's a beautiful name. How are you, sweetheart? Lovely. Thanks for joining us today. We're doing our three ingredient PB cookies. Now, if you wanted, you know, it would be fabulous, guys. You could sandwich these when they're finished. Ooh. Get a little raspberry jam, sandwich them. Fabulous. PB and J's. Or what Allie suggested, hi, Anna, how are you, is to dip these once they're out in a little chocolate. In a little, I, what I would use is the uh, sweet and semi-sweet chocolate chips with some coconut oil. Melt that down in the microwave or over a double boiler and then dip half of it in and half of it out. It's so fabulous. So here we are, booze. They're gonna go right in the oven. Um, 350 on the top rack. Here's a key when you're making cookies, a la Martha Stewart. Only cook one rack at a time. Yeah. One at a time, or else you're gonna be switching them around your racks and things like that, and they have a tendency not to cook as evenly. So you have to do one, 
one uh, sheet pan at a time, which then when you're making lots of cookies, you're going to be in the kitchen all day. Tutti il giorno. Tutti il giorno. You're going to be all there all day. <laughs> God knows. I know. I've made lots of cookies and that's how it goes. So those are the peanut butter cookies, loveys. I could show you, I have another little, um, I have another sheet here. If you love these sill pats, guys, get these. Go to some of the restaurant stores or baking stores, order them online. They're the best things because then you don't have to go through lots of parchment paper. You wash these up after every use. They're just amazing. They're fantastic. They're so great. They hold up fabulously. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So here we go, loveys. I'm just going to show a couple more. And, you know, why don't we show this one with the... Okay. Um, Not had a little glass. It's, like you can a use a little, like a, like a cordial, cordial glass. But I'll, let's just see what it looks like, guys. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it looks like, but it's, it's kind of pretty, guys. Yeah. See it? You see. Yeah. We just need more, um, just need more flour. Yeah. And maybe a smaller glass. Plus, I think actually real, real flour would work better. Yes. Real actual flour. Because almond flour is made of nuts, so it's going to be sticky. That's it. That is for sure. Hi, Thea. How are you, dear? So I'll just put a couple here, lovies. It's, I'd say it makes about um, 12, 13, 12, 13, 14. I'd say 15, 16 cookies, guys. If you're using this small uh, ice cream scoop, which I'm using, the smaller ice cream scoop. 16, 17 guys, we can get 17 out of this. Scrape the, uh... scrape the edges, use your fabulous French spatchy, and we'll get that all finished. There we go, guys. So there's another one. I might be able to get one more out of here. <laughs> we don't waste anything. <laughs> waste nothing in the kitchens, loves. You know, you can always eat this because it's delicious, unless you don't want to eat raw egg, but it's, it's very, very nice. So what I do, I do, I'm a little messy, but that's all right. I just sort of get it in there. Boom. That's big one, good. That's it, guys. Get an extra big one. Boom. Here we go. So there we are, lovies. There you go, babe. And I'll just do it with my little fork here. You need some more think, honey? No, I think we're good. good. I can just do it quickly. Okay. That's the whole key. Go fast, guys. Because <laughs> then if it's it sticks, if you tend to sort of press down, you have to go very quickly. Boom. Boom. There you go, boys. Boom. Fabulous. That's right, sweethearts. Fast. And furious today you know that movie fast and furious <laughs> like the cars the fast and furious that's what we're doing fabuloso it's the end of the semester so it's a little bit cuckoo we're, we're teaching and lars is advising and we're getting grades in and finals and all that sort of thing so it's all has to be in in a couple of days so that's where we're busy running around doing sweethearts and then when uh classes are over we'll have a whole other month here before we leave for Denmark, God willing. So we'll be going off to Denmark and practicing all of our tunes. Because you know I'm doing a whole, um, literally have little scoop I brought right during when the quarantine started and have yet to make cookies. Gonna open that pup. That's right, Tamara. Open this pup up. You're gonna love it. There's so many great cookie recipes, loves. This is a great three ingredient recipe one. There's make some oatmeal cookies with it. Make the chocolate chippers. I mean, there's so many chocolate chip cookies, you can spend a whole day looking at the recipes because, you know, you use melted butter, you use brown butter, heavy use dark brown sugar, light brown sugar. You refrigerate it for 24 hours. I mean, you could go cuckoo on the chocolate chip cookies. But sometimes the really great one is just the one on the back of the Toll House package. It's just fabulous. It is dark brown sugar, though. That makes a big difference with cookies. But this scoop is really great. Just make sure I spray it with a little coconut spray or baking spray, and then it slips right out. It's fabulous, and it's much easier to clean. So that's what's so fantastic. Now, I made these before, loveys. These are my keto ones with the brown sugar. They should, um, that should be wine, not water. It's Friday. <laughs> oh, Lord Fegley. You know me, I'm such a big drinker. Not. That's all right, loves. Hi, Amy Schroeder. Oh, my God. People from coming back from all over the place. Amy Schroeder, we were at AVA together. Oh Cheers, Amy Schroeder. I'm drinking like it is wine. But see, the thing is, I drink very quickly. So if I drank, it'd be over. <laughs> be five wines in about 50 seconds before I knew it. That's why I stick to water, loves. So there it is, Bowie's our fabulous three ingredient PB cookies. Do something creative with them, loves. You could put coconut on top. I know Allie was decorating them with chocolate chips or little crushed peanuts on top. Um, I put chocolate chips in them before. Do anything you want. Cheers. Thank you, Miss Amy. How are you, sweetheart? Lovely to see you. Thanks for stopping by the DWTD. The Dining with the Diva. Um, so today's Friday it was our Fast and Furious and our three ingredient cookies. And I'm coming up with some new recipes. Because <laughs> you know, we're in like number 53, I think. 
Today's 52. And then, oh, bacon. Look at Annie Lynn getting all jiggy with it. She wants to put some bacon. Put bacon oh, on it, Annie Lynn. How about maple syrup and bacon? Let's dip them in bacon. Bacon grease. No, I'm kidding. Like, I would put, yeah, you could put some crispy bacon on top. You could do a maple glaze and put crispy bacon. I've seen, you know, people do donuts like that. Woo! Bacon might be fabulous. It'd be that sweet and salty combo. So fry up some bacon, chop it up. Maybe stir it into it. That might be curious. Try it all out. I know my Aunt Lynn Tanae is making the sausage pasta. I know you guys are eating that later. So I hope you love it. It was delicious. I know Lars flipped out for it and all of our neighbors. We took it to three different people. Yep. But we got a couple bites and then we took it all away and it was gone. And Lars said, where did it go? <laughs> and by the time he wanted more, it was gone. <laughs> it was gone. I'd already given it all away. I'm like, oops. Oh. So... It's all gone, loveys, but we'll make some more fun things. I want to use my fabulous porcini mushrooms this week. Um, my sister have given me a recipe. We might just do another pizza because I have so I actually got a pizza dough because I actually, you know what? Remember I told you guys I was going to make the, um, the cheese bread. It's the Georgian cheese bread just filled with the cheese and the egg yeah. where you wrapped it. I might do that because I have to look it up again. I know it starts with a K. Sorry. Kalpuchka, I have to look it up. Kal Kal Sorry, just it's gone now. It's gone. But I had I had put that on I th probably two months ago. Uh -huh. It's a Georgian cheese bread. Hi, Kate. How are you, sweetheart? It's a Georgian. Hi, Mo. It's a Georgian cheese bread that you do with pizza dough. Now, I didn't make the pizza dough this time. I actually bought one from Aldi's. I bought a dough because I wanted to try it out mm -hmm. and see how it is. And we could make that Georgian cheese bread. Now, I don't have the, what's it called? Kal Kachapuri. Kachapuri. That's it. Kachapuri. And there's restaurants that do it in Brooklyn and New York, and it's fantastic. And it's like a boat with an egg. It's like a boat. It's like a calzone of cheese, but it's open. It's not closed. So you make a boat, and the cheese is in the middle. I don't have any Georgian cheese you're supposed to use, but I have, um, you can use Monterey Jack. Maybe we'll use Cooper's and something. And then you put an egg in it at the end, and then you use the outside crust to dip into it. I mean, it's not locale. There's nothing locale about it. Um, but it might be fun just to make it. I always wanted to make it, so it might be a fun one to try. And it, it's a fantastic dish. Never had it, but I've just seen it. But yeah, it's it's off the chain. It's off the chain. It's going to be very unctuous and naughty and delicious. But I have pizza dough, so why don't we try that, guys? That'd be good. Um, I don't have the exact cheese, but I think between mozzarella and Monterey Jack and Cooper Sharp and cheddar, I can sort of figure it out, and then you put an egg in, and I think actually a dollop of butter. I mean, it's a cholesterol yes, you do put butter in nightmare. It. <laughs> yeah, so it's, but it just might be fun to make it because I do have a lot of eggs. We're 14 dozen eggs, guys, 14 dozen. Anyone need any eggs? Because, know. you know, let me know, because I'm gonna make it frittatas. I need to make more frittatas. I'm gonna, and you know what else I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do hollandaise. I'm gonna show you an eggs benedict. We'll make some poachers and we'll make a beautiful hollandaise with some fresh lemon juice. And I'll show you how to make a fast hollandaise. God willing, it doesn't break. So, uh, but I'm going to show you guys how to make a, or a blender hollandaise. Blender's real easy. A uh, blender hollandaise, which is usually foolproof. So that might be fun. Mm -hmm. Let's do a, let's do, I know what we're going to do this weekend. For Sunday brunch, we're going to do eggs Florentine oh. on English muffies, because I have English muffins. And eggs Florentine, which was on a bed of spinach and poachers and hollandaise. Boom! And you know what I might even do is a brown butter hollandaise. Yes, I just did say that. I just said brown butter hollandaise. Because, you know, we need more brown butter in our lives. So I know there's a brown butter hollandaise, and I'm going to do it. There's the cacciapuri on the picture. Yes, and here's the cacciapuri, guys. See it, guys? Do you it's, see what's happening here? It's beautiful. Look how fabulous that is. <laughs> Anything with an egg and cheese and bread. Yeah. And there it is. So we'll make that. We're going to make some low-cal, low-cholesterol dishes this weekend. Kachapuri and hollandaise. So when your cholesterol reaches 7,000 by the end of quarantine, you can just blame DWTT. Say, what, why did this happen? You can blame this show because there was nothing low-fat and cholesterol about it. <laughs> Freeze some for mama to eat when you're in Denmark. Freeze some what? Freeze some kachapuri. I can freeze whatever, but you know... Hi, Christina and Lars. Hi, Christina's mom. Hi. Eggs, corn. Eggs. Good one, Dr. Lars. Instead of eggs, Florentine, eggs, corn. Very clever. <laughs> very clever. Very good. Very good. Um, so it's a very, very good one, sweethearts. So there it is, love. So, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to do some really low cholesterol dishes coming up. I'm giving them all away. As soon as they come out of the oven, I'm actually jogging them off to everyone else. 
Yes, Aunt Lynn, I'll make her anything. I'll, I'll keep her well supplied in cookies. I just had another Aldi order. I have pears, I have beautiful apples. Got some great, great, great things here so we can make some lovely, lovely dishes. I uh, get the kale out. I have some kale. Maybe I'll do a kale Florentine. Ooh, I'll do it with some spinach and kale because I have beautiful kale and we're gonna mix it together. Hi, Deneen, how are you, sweetheart? Just finished up our three ingredient PB cookies. Um, I'm gonna check them, they've been in. I'm just gonna check it. Kale and eggs, that would be delicious. Yep, see, look guys, they do spread. Look, loveys, look how beautiful. I think they can go a little they, longer. They go longer. I'd say about 12, 15 minutes or so, but they do spread out, especially when you put eggs in them. If you wanna make them vegan, use maple syrup, and you could use egg replacer, uh, that sort of thing. So you can make them vegan if you would like. It's just a matter of sort of figuring out the um, the combination of ingredients. If you're using almond butter, if you're using uh, macadamia butter, pecan butter, cashew butter, it changes things because peanut butter is different. So all the different nut butters are different. So just try it out, guys. Don't be afraid. Experiment. It's just cooking. You know, it's not. Uh, I don't know. It's not. You're not. It's, it's not. It's not. You're not doing brain surgery on something if it doesn't come out. You know, feed it to the birds. Feed it to the squirrels. Feed it to the raccoons. Gray gardens. That's all I'm going to say. Great Gardens. Watch the documentary. After 10 minutes, you'll be terrified. <laughs> you'll be running, running for your life. It's on YouTube for free. Great Gardens, the real documentary. Check it out. <laughs> Check it out, guys. That's all I have to say. You're going to have a grand old time. What's the oven set on? 350, sweet peas. 350, the oven set on for the cookies. I'm going to say about 12 minutes, 10 to 12. Just keep your eyes on them because, you know, every oven is different, how they cook, every single, if you're at a high altitude, that makes things very different. I know when Allie cooked the other day, she had somebody in New Mexico, so that's a whole different ball of wax. You have to do things differently when you're at high altitude, if you're in Denver or something like that. So here we are, lovies. That was fun today. We'll have our beautiful cookies. I'm giving them all away. Right, Dr. Lars? <laughs> that's right. So um, just wanted to say... Thank you so much for being here today. We're gonna to have a fabulous weekend with some <laughs> insane food, but why not? I don't know if anyone's ever shown you how to make it. I have a couple, uh, I have an actual video I'm gonna watch how to make the, the cacciapori, because it's you fabuloso. Can, it's, You're gonna go cuckoo for it. It's just cheese and egg and bread, cheese, egg and bread in a pizza dough. It's basically like a cheesy calzone that's open. Yeah. Uh, so it'll be great, fabuloso. So we're gonna do that and we're gonna do our hollandaise because I wanna show you how to make hollandaise. And we're gonna do a brown butter hollandaise because why not? Why not try the brown butter hollandaise? Just for it, because I've never done it. I've made hollandaise, I've made bernays, but I've never made brown butter hollandaise. <laughs> so why not try it? Uh, we're on our brown butter kick. I've made my brown butter and uh, sage sauce and I've made brown butter oatmeal cookies. So why not keep going on the brown butter theme? Ciao, Ann Kennedy. Thanks so much for watching. Check out my fabulous YouTube channel, lovies. Mayo, mayo, brown butter mayo, Aunt Lynn, is that what you're asking, sweetheart? Oh, it's, it's possible. I've never done it. But there, I'm sure you could do brown butter everything. <laughs> um, whenever you Google anything, brown butter, this, that, something comes up, believe me. There's not much that not someone hasn't thought of. Believe me. <laughs> it's all been done. It's all been done. When I think, oh, I'm inventing something and I Google it, believe me, there's like a thousand of them out there. So people are very creative. Yes, so my loves, thanks for joining us today. Ci vediamo domani. Stay safe, stay put for now. Stay cooking, wink, wink. And I will see you tomorrow, either with the hollandaise or with the cacciapurri. I just have to see. I have to get my pizza dough out. I froze it, so now I have to defrost it. Maybe we'll do that tomorrow. It'll be great and fun. And uh, thanks for stopping by. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Check out my Patreon channel, Two Sweethearts. And I love you all, and I'll see you soon. Tanti bacini. Ciao, ciao.